as we've been taking um, limits over the last few days, um, we've you've probably noticed that sometimes it's really easy to take a limit, that you just essentially plug the value of x in and calculate the function and it gives you that. Um, other times you got to do some more work. Um, uh, sometimes there's asymptotes, sometimes there's holes in the graph, sometimes there's you know left limits not equaling right limits and uh, things like that. And, and when I look at a graph like, like this one, I see that you know, at certain places, this, this function is really nice. You know, if, I, if I'm looking here and I'm saying the limit as x goes to 0, well, there's nothing that goes wrong around 0. So the limit as x goes to 0 is going to be the same thing as what happens at 0, right? Um, you know, other places, now, at x equals 1, it looks like a limit exists, but but the function doesn't exist there. So there's, you know, a little a hole in the graph or something. Uh, you know, but, but all through this stretch, the function is just pretty nice. You know, at x equals 2, the limit at as x goes to 2 should be the same as the function value at 2. Three, there's a problem because uh, you know because you got a left limit different from a right limit, and five's got something goofy going on over here too, where it looks like there's a limit value as you get close to five, but what happens at five is completely different. So there's there's a hole in the graph and then a, a point put up there for the function value for five. So some places this function is nice, and other places um, it, it's not quite so nice. And and what we want to do is sort of get an idea of what do I mean by nice. Um, and this is where we define what's called continuous. Okay. So let's make this definition. We say that a function f of s, f of x, is continuous at x equals a if the limit of f of x as x goes to a is the same as the function value at a. Right? And if you're looking at the graph here, here's a, here's my function, that the value of the limit here, that as x gets close to a, the function values are getting close to f of a, that the limit equals f of a. What happens when I get to A is the same thing as what happens when I'm getting close to A. Okay. Um, notice that um, this is this is the definition, right? And this is something I'll test you on. I'm going to test you on three definitions: uh, the definition of limit, continuity, and derivative. And when we get to derivative, um, but there within this statement, there's actually three things that are implied. One is that um, that this limit here uh, actually exists. Right? You can't be equal to each other if, if one side doesn't exist. So the limit actually has to exist. Um, the function actually has to exist. So the limit exists, the function exists, and they're equal to each other. That f of a is equal to, I mean that's what the statement says, that they're equal. So some some textbooks you'll you'll actually see they give all three conditions for the definition. I don't I don't think we need all three conditions. Um, so the limit as x goes to a of f of x is equal to f of a. That's really all we need. But these other two things are implied within that definition. Okay. Um, looking back at um, this graph, I can see that you know we we talked about x equals zero. The function value is right here. The limit as you go to zero uh, is right up there. This is continuous at zero. This is continuous at a half. This is not continuous at x equals one because the function value doesn't exist at x equals one. The limit exists, but no function value. So this would be a spot where it's not continuous, and I would call that a point of discontinuity. Right? Continuity if you have the function value equaling the limit. Discontinuity if you if you don't. So at x equals 3 there's a discontinuity because although the function value exists down here, there's a filled in dot right there, the limit doesn't exist as you go to 3. So f of 3 exists but the limit does not exist uh, as you go to 3 because the left hand limit is different than the right hand limit. Now sometimes we might even say that this at x equals 3 it's continuous from the left because as you come in from the left the limit is equal to the value. Um, but it's not continuous from the right because the limits up here, the right hand limits up here, and the function values down there. Okay? So sometimes they talk about one-sided continuity if you're up against an, uh, a break in the graph or something like that. Um, 
x equals 5 is an interesting uh, situation here because there's a limit value, whatever this y value is here, right? Um, so the limit, the so function has a limit as x goes to 5. The function has a value at x equals 5. It's way up there. Um, but they're not equal to each other, right? And so this is not continuous at 5. Continuous at 4, no problems at 4. When I think about continuity, I mean, the definition is what it is, right? But there's some implications of the definition. And essentially, if you can draw the graph through the point without picking your pencil up, then that graph is continuous at that point. At this hole, i got to pick my pencil up and take it off for a moment and then put it back down again, right? That's not continuous at that point. When there's a break in the graph, I certainly have to pick my pencil up, put it down over there, and keep drawing, right? This spot here where there's that hole, and then you got to put the point in up there and then continue on here. Certainly I need to pick my pencil up at that point. So when I ask you what's the definition, that's the definition. It's continuous at a if the limit as x goes to a of f of x is the same as f of a. When you think about it though, think about it in terms of when you're looking at a graph, when, where is it continuous, where is it discontinuous? If you can draw it without picking up your point, pick, picking up your pencil, then it's continuous at all those points. If you've got to pick your pencil up, then it's discontinuous when you pick your pencil up. Okay. So what are the ways that it could be discontinuous? Well, either the limit doesn't exist, or the function doesn't exist, or they're not equal to each other. Right? Um, and we saw that each of those cases in that in that graph. Um, I want to give a further definition of we say um, that a function f of x is continuous on an interval. if it is continuous at each point on the interval. I would also say a function, hmm, would I say a function is continuous? Um, I would. Um, generally we talk about it being continuous on intervals. So it may be continuous for a while on one interval and then you know maybe there's a break and it's continuous again for a while. Okay. Um, some, some graphs are just always continuous. Um, uh, polynomial functions are, are continuous. Um, there's a there's a theorem towards the end of this section here. I'm going to just, it's, I think it's easier if I just pull the page up here um, and show you the theorem. Where is that? Sorry. I think it's right at the end. Well, here's theorem five. Any polynomial is continuous everywhere. Polynomials are just nice. Rational functions are continuous except um, except for possibly at the uh, asymptotes. Right? So polynomials are continuous everywhere. Rational functions are continuous except at those asymptotes. Um, trig functions uh, are, are continuous except if they have asymptotes. Um, what, other, what other functions? You know, log functions, exponential functions, uh, they're all continuous where they're defined. Right? Um, tangent is not continuous at pi over 2, right? If you think about the tangent function, uh, y equals tangent x is this, this thing that looks like this. At pi over 2, there's an asymptote. Uh, the tangent function is not continuous at pi over 2. It is continuous over here, though, at pi over 4 or at 0. At, you know, if you're at a place where you don't have an asymptote, then the function is continuous. Right? All of the functions that we know of, all the nice ones, are continuous unless they're not defined, right? The, the log function is not continuous for negative values of x because it's not even defined for negative values of x. At least it's not defined with real outputs. Um, so continuous functions, there are nice functions. They're the ones that are easy to take the limit because you can um, 
just plug the value in, right? How do you take the limit as x goes to a, right? Well, you just plug in f of a. Just plug in a and calculate the function value. That's the limit.